Once again, guys, welcome back to the Miss Peter Weekly Conquest Cup. Once again, I'm Blue, your host for this evening. We're now moving into our second and last semifinal of the night, which is going to be between, once again, Mime is actually Mime. Coming off of the drama from last night's 3v3 tournament, where there was a huge scandal, uh, thinking that Mime was actually Tanny, but he's assured me it's not true. Not sure if I believe it, but we'll see. Anyway. As well, their opponent will be outplayed by Belief. That'll basically be the outplayed by Children by Roster. Outplayed by Children Roster, which will change the uh, the noun at the end of the team name every single tournament now. So anyway, guys, we'll go into the game right now. Let us check out the teams and builds very quickly before we get started with the first game. We're gonna go over the blue team builds first. Mime's actually mine. Stalagt over here is gonna be running with Didi Ellie. I believe that'll be Celestial Strength. 00266 on the trade split, and yep, this will be the case. Celestial Strength with Battle and Doom on the Sigil slots. For the Nagus over here is gonna be playing Guardian for this team. We'll be running with a Mace as well as an offhand shield. Staff running it once again with Sigil of Renewal and Energy on both weapon sets with a Rune of the Soldier and a Cleric Sam with the traits again being 00266, opting to go down a virtuesque build line. Tiffany Starcaller for this team is going to be playing Warrior with 00626, fairly standard Hambo split, running obviously with the Hambo build, Berserker's Amulet, as well as Runes of Strength, so not really to explain there. Mime will be playing, I believe, Shatter Mesmer, yep, Shatter Mesmer, 44006, so first Mesmer in quite a while, actually, this should be fun. As well, running it with Greatsword in addition to a Staff, making use of Runes of Strength and Berserker's Amulet. And then last but not least, Chimplicity will be playing Thief for this team, running with Sword, Offhand Dagger, as well as a Shurpo, Runes of Strength, Berserker's Amulet, and the traits again being 40046. Very interesting trait split there. And then, once again, guys, we will go over Outplayed by Beliefs builds when we get to the second map. And our map rotation, once again, as a reminder, is going to be first of all on Temple. Finally, we'll move over to Legacy. And then, last but not least, we will go on to Temple, or probably the Forest of Niflhel, if we do require a third game. Let's not waste any more time, though, guys. Let's get started with game one. And as soon as our players are readied up, we shall begin. Once again, very large apologies on my own part for the uh, smoke alarm. Not having the battery replaced. I think I have the batteries upstairs. I just keep forgetting to do it because I don't know how to do it because the the smoke alarms in my house are really weird to where if you take the batteries out the whole house Let's goes off and I've only ever thought about doing it at 4 a.m. so like yeah Let's I don't want to wake up my entire house trying to change the smoke alarm so I'll probably just ask my dad to do it at some point in the near future because I don't know how to take the battery out without it setting off the alarms in the entire house. But yeah, more on that later. Game 1 beginning, guys. It's outplayed by Belief versus Mime is actually Mime. Once again, our blue team Mime will be spawning on the left side of the map. As well, outplayed by Belief will be spawning on the right side of the map. Now, initially, we're going to see Chimplicity going over here. He will be capping the alter node. Other than that, there are no crosses or anything just as of yet. You will note there's some hesitation on the side of the Red Smear Wake. He will be hanging out in the back and probably either join the mid fighter or go for a cross cap a little bit later. And as well, we'll be seeing Hippify capturing the home node over here for our uh, apologies for the Temple for apologies, capping Temple over here for the red team going into the uh, mid fight. Now, let's check this out once again. Actually, pretty uneventful middle fight, but look at what's going on up here, guys. We got a rafter fight. Let's go up here on the Zombify once again, checking things out. Over here. Almost getting knocked off the plank here, as you can see, taking quite a bit of harassment. Not out just yet, just taking a lot of his DS damage there. Mime actually did end up going down, unfortunately, gonna get uh, knocked over here on the corner. Didn't actually fall down there, and as we do see a teammate over there on the side, it's not gonna be able to help though, as again, there is far too much corpse sleep coming onto his corpse there, so he's gonna get knocked out pretty quickly, and I believe that'll be the first kill of the game going on to the Mesmer there. We back over here once again into the uh, the, into the the gate fight. We do see that again. It's pretty heavily favored in the red team's favor at the moment. Obviously not any time near it being completed. But with it starting off here with the elimination of the mesmer and other things considered, they do have a pretty hefty advantage. But once again, main target on the side of our blue team is going to be on Zombify. They want to eliminate that threat, get it out of play, and just again get it away from them because they don't want to deal with that Connie person. They don't want to deal with any of that. They just want to get rid of it and get it out. Now note too, actually, that we've got dual necromancers on the red team here at the moment. They've got Nos and Zombify. Now, I want to actually see here, I think they're both running Connie belts. So again, there's going to be some really stupid amount of Connie pressure coming in on this game so far, and that's going to make it very annoying to team fight on notes. None of them running Epidemic, though, interestingly enough. I would have sworn one of them would run Epidemic, just because, again, the two of them combined, if they're on the same target, can can just do absolutely horrendous Connie application, and being able to spread that, and really only one of them needs to run it, because, you know, like I said, it doesn't only spread your Connie, it spreads all the Connies on the target to everyone around him. So if really only one of them was running it, 
I feel like they could really just end team fights with one spell swoop, but that's not gonna be the case here. They're still doing quite well though, doing a nice job of actually supporting each other here. You saw the Nas almost got knocked by Chimplicity a couple seconds ago, but a good fallback there by Zombify and some support coming into play there as well. Did make the difference and allowed him to knock out Chimplicity into the downstate. He is not dead! Just yet, in fact, our blue team has taken a slight advantage over here in the gate point, and as well as taken a pretty hefty advantage on the other two side nodes, uh, with Kuljah being knocked out. Um, but our blue team is looking all right over here, but they may be able to take the gate point, but again, an over, well, could be Carl, then an overcommitment to this middle point may actually lead to them losing the other, has led to them losing the other two side nodes as well. Chimplicity is already in the process of trying to capture back the blue team home node back over there. Not apologies, mine is the one trying to capture back the uh, blue team home node over there, and Forlorn Angus, in the meantime, over here at the gate point, is coming under quite a lot of pressure, being in the downstate with three, four people on his corpse there. Unfortunately, they're not going to be able to get him back up to play, and Chimplicity being feared away from the corpse will have all the streams of getting his Guardian back up to heal him. Smashed, indeed. So, like to, as well, will fall into the downstate over here at the gate point. We see Quilch coming in. Should be able to execute him with no issues whatsoever. And with that, guys, I do believe our red team will take that and, again, should be able to move on from that and to conquest other nodes. Now, they're actually... Kind of misdistributing themselves, at red least uh, would appear the so. The red point. team is at the moment. You will note they tried to make a bit of a push here for the altar, but unfortunately that did end up being a pretty large mistake because it put them kind of over here on this side of the map where they really need to be back over here towards their home, though, because as you can see, Mime as well as Chimplicity made very quick work of Hippify and knocked them out. And it should be able to get a in just a second. We even got Chimplicity over here, kind of running interference. Forlorn Aegis is also going to transfer himself. Recently coming out of spawn after being knocked down in the middle, uh, we'll come over here as well in order to team fight once again at this far point node. And once again, they do have a pretty good chance of taking this on, honestly, just based on that engagement we saw there. But it'll welcome down how red team wants to transfer over here appeared. as well this buff will be pretty crucial too once again stillness buff for those who don't know what it does do it doubles the value of your capture points so one caps will be worth two caps two caps will be worth four caps and three caps will be worth six caps and again if you get a six cap you can almost end the game which is that one play right there depending on what stage of the game you're on but we just saw there that it's actually going to end up going into the red team favor good play there from him i didn't even see him coming into play there came in there with the magnet the clutch magnet to pull him into the hole there he's not going to be forced to run around and will no longer be able to interrupt any cast on that buff there so congrats red team they're going to get that initial cap, uh, cap over here on, on the uh, middle buff, stillness that is, and will now be doubling their capture point value. Unfortunately, though, it is going to be tied as we do see blue team holding the two signers, but that's going to stop really quickly as we almost instantly saw Wakey getting the decap as we saw the blue team getting the cap at the red team home note. So, red team, though, finally actually getting a team fight victory. I don't, I don't believe they actually managed to take a team fight so far in this set. They just took the first one there uh, back over at the red team home note uh, so far in middle. That was really the only other big team fight we had, so right now they are one one for team fights. So, still very even. It's all coming down to lots of rotations here at the moment, and just in general, how they are playing the entire map and right now red team is doing that just a little bit better but obviously again the initial mid fight taking did lead to it pretty heavily as well the red team holding the lead so not to count too much yet but our red team definitely seems to be on top of things here at the moment and obviously that is showing in terms of the score. Hippify going down here, just gonna be able to get the snow off. He saw almost managed to res him back up there, but unfortunately gonna fail in that regard and as well. Take a lot of corpse cleave in the process here. Cool just taking out his point of view here at the moment. We actually have a portal open as well. Gonna go over to Mime's point of view. See we actually just came out of that portal. I believe he was actually coming to mid through that portal. Probably was hanging out at Temple, I believe. Might have done that from spawn there too, but he did just get to this node uh, from another one as well, opening up the portal for anyone else to come through there. And as well, we are seeing, I believe it is 3v2 at the moment. Although obviously being under red screen. Whoa! Mime getting pulled up into the air there as he does get pulled in with the magnet, but not gonna make too much of a difference there as he does get right away from that. Zombify getting very low here in this 3v2. We do have going, I believe it is a 3v3 now actually in favor of neither team, but obviously red team one of the three cap has that really big push in their favor here at the moment. But stopping out Zombify, blue team gonna get that much closer to taking mid node away and as well getting a foothold they need to pressure themselves onto other nodes. We did see one of the blue team offenders, Chimplicity, getting knocked out just outside of their home node, so he's gonna have to respawn and again. He won't be available to support mid fight or anything else here as well, but they have successfully taken control of middle. Bit of miscommunication there for Lanegas for whatever reason was designing to chase uh, Hippify off the point there but has now gone right back onto that and will be capturing that point for his team very soon but uh, as you can see by the overall score here our red team is really pushing ahead here even though they only had that one buff there with a one cap that entire time but it has made a pretty serious difference as you can tell by the scores at the moment 326 to 125 outplayed by belief is really rocketing ahead here and blue team may be reliant on the bottom buff to come back into this game which is never a good thing keep that in mind too that the bottom buff if you need the bottom buff that's a very bad sign because it, it, first of all your opponent probably realizes this and they're just going to use it to their advantage by either a just pulling one person down there at any given time to just keep it stalemated for as long as humanly possible or b they're going to pressure the crap out of you and just decap all your nodes while you, and like considering that they know it actually they are going to pressure the crap out of you on all of your other nodes and work as hard as they possibly can to get another three cap against you because they know you need to pressure down there and get that node under your control so again with those buffs spawning 
up at the top, we do have Quilter going up against Mime for control of that. Kind of off to the side here, Wakey and Chimplicity are kind of whacking away at each other too, so those two will uh, probably collide in a second here, and we're already going to have that happening, as we do see uh, Chimplicity coming in here for a bit of damage onto uh, Wakey, as he's the one in the general vicinity of the buff at the moment. And then meanwhile, down at the bottom here, we do actually see Stalagta, along with Forlorn Angus from the blue team, and actually this is interesting too, because Red Team is the one that applied the superior pressure to the bottom point. The blue Team's only got two people down here, Red Team's got three, so they are really overextending their balance here, and like I talked about in the last map when we did play on this one, one. Uh, now we're going to see a really quick turnaround here with Blue Team getting a pretty easy 3 cap. And if they can take the mid buff, they don't even need that just bottom like buff that. now. They can just get that buff and, and basically board. come back with just that. So we're going to have to see now. I'm almost positive we're going to see Red Team kind of rethinking their distribution of players here. And it's actually pretty close to Lacta going down over here in mid. We're going to see Tiffany Starcar getting the stop of a zombie fight. Blue Team may get a tap down here over here at bottom too. Granted, they are losing control of the nose they got here a second ago as well. Nas has just come in. He got the gate point back for his team. And then meanwhile, over here at the, uh, apologies, at the Temple node, we you see Chimplicity versus Wakey over here. Now, this one could really go either way, but in general, Chimplicity is going to have a bit of trouble staying on the point versus Wakey just because there's a lot of annoying AoEs and Condies he's going to get hit up with, and he's going to be forced out of the way a lot of times just to get himself in a good position. He doesn't even want to fight that. He's going to leave that alone and go focus on other nodes. Now, back over here, Blue Team is closing in on a cap over here at the buff, but Zombify Reinforced it will stop that right in its tracks, even though Quilja was very close to death indeed. And at the bottom buff itself, again, very much so stalemated. Really, no one's game to says of yet, and Red Team, once again, reasserting that two cap, have put themselves in another very good position to push themselves towards a victory, but as they have left it open... It is going to flip once again, but they need more than a two cap. Uh, Mime does it here at this point if they want to take the game, and they've even lost control of their home note here too. So Blue Team really needs to get their stuff together. They need to stop focusing so much on the bottom buff. Granted, they need that bottom buff to come back here at this point, with considering the red team score. But a bit of an overemphasis on it, like I've been talking about, really can hurt you more than it can help you. Tiffany Starcaller goes down in the bottom, and as well, I think that is the last player from Blue Team that's up and alive down here. So this buff may actually go into red team hands after all. So like this down here, granted, somebody needs to go over the buff very quickly here, as if they don't kick it soon, another player from the Blue Team can get down to stop them from capping, but even at this point, guys, I don't think they need the buff to win this as well. Mid buff was channeled by blue team, but again, they don't actually have any points in their name. If they can cap the bottom buff here now, it can definitely help them, but I do think red team has done a very excellent job at kind of waiting out here um, while they may again capture it, and nope, again, it's not even going to happen as we do see someone else coming down. Like I was talking about earlier, just turtling it one by one, coming in player by player, and just turtling it for as long as possible. They've got over 470 points, guys, so with that said, I am pretty sure we're going to be seeing Outplayed by Belief take this game. And once again, we'll now be taking the first game. And it will now be just one game away from moving on to the finals. As well as eliminating their opponents, Mime, from this week's tournament. Again, 15 points remaining. It's looking really good for them. And more than likely, they will have this game in the bag. Stillness actually will come up for the second time now over at the top here. But once again, like I've been saying, at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Red Team's going to take it. And what that means, guys, we're going to be going on to our second map in just a second, which will be on Legacy. So make sure you guys are sticking around for that. And we'll be coming back in about two to three minutes as soon as our players are ready up for that game. Adrenaline rush. Red Team wins a capture point. The flow.
chance to nail down your strategy. Replenishing. All right, guys, and we are once again coming back now with the second game on Legacy of the Faux Fire of our second final, our second semi-final here on the Miss Pedia Weekly Cup. It's Outplay by Hold Belief versus points. Mime is actually Seize Mime there. once again on Legacy of the Faux Fire. So let's open up our map and check out the splits as the game does begin. Coming out of the gates, we'll see Mime, Mesmer heading over here to the home node for the blue team. Uh, kind of a different story than we saw in the last game. We actually saw Thief head to the home node uh, in the last game, but again, they'll still be sending that first two player over there to reinforce another node in just a second. We were going to look like see the blue blue team pushing over into the far node, but that changed very quickly as they spotted a very large number of players coming in from the red team home node and instantly dive bombed onto that. We see Zombify being the primary target, at least for simplicity as we're taking a look at his point of view at the moment. Really diving in over here on Zombify, trying to knock him as quick as possible. Zombify going to do a bit of a late plague pop, but still will be able to mitigate a pretty decent amount of damage that he has gotten that up. He's not really surrounded by any friends as you can see here at the moment, the only one that's remotely close to him. Um, Apologies, no one's really close to him here as... Oh, apologies, I meant the blue team player over here is uh, is not really going to be surrounded by many friends. Tiffany Star call this. They do have to watch out for that. His red team really fell back and, yep, like I said, kind of surrounded around them there. But, again, blue team will kind of turn the tables back onto them as they get themselves grouped up and we're in a better formation there once again. So, Tiffany Star will put himself in a much better position as he does get himself back up and surround himself by teammates. But, as you saw there, a bit of a, uh, bit of a YOLO push, I would say onto the entirety of the red team did allow them to cap that node pretty easily as nobody was actually standing on graveyard so blue team is all in on this team fight they are banking on taking this wiping out everybody on the red team and being able to completely steal away the mid node through this and again they did only take out zombify through that so i'm not entirely sure if that was the smartest move in all honesty as once again a red team was able to take a pretty quick cap on middle usually again as it is legacy for those who were newer to the game more unfamiliar with how the maps usually play out legacy the middle point because it is double the size of a usual capture point usually takes you know double the amount of time we usually won't see a cap until maybe the 11 or 10 minute mark in the average game we saw a cap almost, you know, almost within the first minute of the game there, so it's a very rare thing to see. But the blue team, once again, banking on eliminating the entirety of the red team, that kind of has worked, and look, they're actually going to get this away. Unfortunately, this has allowed the blue red team to kind of split themselves up by quite a bit, and red it did enforce a very long board. team fight at, where they had to force the red team completely off notes, so once again, left their own notes kind of open for backcapping Nas was able to come over here to the waterfall and take that pretty easily. He's going to have to defend against a 1v2 now, but he will have some support coming in here in just a second from Hibify again. A lot of AoE coming in there versus a Thief and Selagta as well. It's going to be very annoying indeed for them to deal with. Uh, Selagta should be able to handle these Connies rather well, but Chimplicity, it will not be the same case for him, so he does have to be a little bit careful that Hibba's in the fight. Mime will join things as well here, so once again, they'll have that extra bit of burst, and with that burst, they might be able to do things properly if they're able to CC. And yep, you're going to see Mobilization coming in here. Hibba getting really low indeed. No Connie cleanse for the next 10 seconds here, unless he's a Super Elixir, and as you're going to see he will go right into the downstate to like to coming in for a stomp no interruption on that whatsoever and Hibba gets a very quick knockout over here at the waterfall point checking out back in mid they did not actually take the cap just to note that too blue team although they did win that very long team fight they did not actually fully capture the nodes over there so uh, Zombify as well as Wakey are going to be able to stalemate this for a little bit longer while they hold full control of both the side nodes Quarry is sitting safely in red team control as you would generally speak and expect as that is their home node and meanwhile over here at the waterfall node blue team is slowly but surely seizing back control of this node obviously though the 100 point lead about what the red team has been able to gain in this time is a pretty big deal in all honesty as again on this map things could rather can things go rather slowly um in the average game and as such 100 point leads are something that can be a really 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 big advantage to you and your team they have finally lost the cap over here Kulja died just off the node it's a little bit hard to see in this rock formation over here but it is actually slightly off a node there so they're probably gonna leave him to bleed out he will obviously try to get himself back up there with symbols of judgment and whatnot and Hiba may try to come in for the res wouldn't be the smartest thing taking a look at his health pool yeah he's gonna growth back around but unfortunately he Two will go down off node, and as such, they'll be able to leave both of those bodies there to bleed out. And now we will see the full cap going on, and two of the members of the Reds will be completely out of commission for the next 20 to 30 seconds. Meanwhile, back over here at the graveyard again, things still kept in their in, apologies, things still kept in their um in their decap position here, as no one has managed to take a full control since that initial cap over there when we saw Blue Team kind of go for the YOLO play onto them. Nas is actually going to end up going down first, as we, from what we've come back to at least, as Nas finds himself in the downstate. Red Team Zombify specifically going to come up here with a Plague Res, trying to get him back up. Actually not going to go for the Res here at the moment, it's just trying to get some damage on the people trying to stomp him there, as again, his body is a little bit far too gone there, and it's not really worth going on and trying to get him back up into play. So they will knock out Nas and again eliminate one of the Necromancers on this team, but Wakey will now find himself in the downstate too, as Forlonegas goes in for a stomp. Should be able to knock him out. Obviously 
obviously the vapor form there, the guaranteed interruption on any stomp attempt there will go off, and Four Lanegas will once again be able to get a stomp off, and will be that much closer to capturing this node for his team, and I believe they will finally get that node, and Blue Team will finally be on the path to coming back into this game. Not actually anything happening here at the Blue moment, so we're going to have to kind of wait for things to pick up. Red Team going for a full regroup again. I've talked about this before. It does make your strategies rather obvious to what your opponent is trying to do, and it's actually going to give Blue Team the time they need to go in and knock down a gate in kind of a false play, but Red Team is going to opt to go for this, and they're actually, this is actually kind of a good position here for Blue Team to be in too, as they're catching uh, the tankier members coming out of the gate here, specifically, they're tanking, uh, I think it's Zomify and Wakey, yeah, Zomify and Wakey coming out of the gate there, and Morales going to see Portal open up just before things get a little bit too messy, they're going to open up that portal, get right back to mid, and again, they'll have that full advantage coming into play, and the rest of them will still have to trudge their way back to mid, well, not only with in-combat speed, but as well with that a little bit of health they had lost in the process, but Wakey once again will probably regenerate that, and just in general, Zombify, it's going to be a chip on the shoulder of him, but the real thing there was that they were in combat, and they were forced to uh, get to that node a little bit slower. Chimplicity, though, with the full red team reinforcements coming into play here now, is going to be a bit of trouble. He finds himself in the downstate. Mime is actually the one going for res here at the moment. No one else from the blue team is. Forlorn Agus goes down as Chimplicity gets up. Chimplicity, though, sitting over here in the fire field, is going to take quite a bit of damage. It actually may end up taking himself into the downstate here. I believe he's running swords, so we can cleanse that if he wants to. I just want to double check the sword. Yeah, he's running swords, so we can cleanse that, but is not going to do that. Instead, goes Kamikaze onto the quarry node. He actually got to the node before he ended up dying, so he's going to get the decap and recap here soon, but because he did not opt to uh, use two on sword there to try and cleanse Condies, he did uh, kind of nuke himself into the downstate. Mime, once again over here, did find himself going down too, with Zombify coming in to execute him, and actually Tiffany Starcaller is doing is going to be the one first to stay on node, and you'll, you'll note there too that Zombify did opt to not go for the stomp shit. Instead, let's go over here, put as many Condies as we can on Tiffany Starcaller and get her out of play, because once once again, with him being off node, he's no threat to them sitting there. There's no, there's, considering he's on the red side of the, like, generally speaking, the red side of that point as well, there's, he's not going to get rezzed up. He, even, he didn't even try to res himself up there. He just let himself die. No one would have been able to get to him in time. No one would have been able to res him. It was, and he wins, wins, he 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 Moving on from that, again, just a kind of overview of the current scores. This game has been somewhat back and forth here. Red Team still actually in the lead here because they got that double cap at the beginning mainly. It's only about a 50 to 40 point lead here now, but there's been back and forth two caps on either side for the majority of this game, and Red Team does have the current one here now, so they are kind of still on the path here to take this game, but I wouldn't count either team out of it just yet. Again, no 100 point lead or above that, so really, this is still anyone's game, and a comeback could happen at any given time. The main bulk of fighting, once again, is taking place over here at the Waterfall, so again, Blue Team having the home field advantage, but Red Team having the current numbers advantage uh, over here at the node itself. They're actually going to see a bubble pop up there. I believe that is a Red Team bubble with both of them hiding inside. They're trying to get some health back because the pressure coming in for the Blue Team is just a little bit too much for the guys uh, to handle here at the moment. Did see another decap happening too with Blue Team sending two of their members, I believe. Yeah, two of their members over here to the quarry. Again, Chimplicity as well as the Mesmer Mime really working together as a unit here, always traveling as one solid group. And again, you'll see that portal play pop up. But unfortunately for the Blue Team though, they were ready for it that time. We had Fear Marks coming down. Zombify was like, nah, -uh, you're not going to gank me. And they were ready for that had those fears going down and again Zombify was able to get out of the way of most of that opening burst that they did pull out into play here but again Red Team still holds on to full control of the node. Chimplicity too are going to get absolutely wrecked there as we do see Kyolja coming into play with Zombify and Wakey too putting the pressure on him. They're going to knock him out of play obviously once again will have the shadow escape to get himself out of the way but in the end of things it will still find himself into the downstate. Curious as to where the Mesmer went actually. Mime, wow Mime really pieced out even headed completely over here to the Red Team base is going to try to loop things around now. Now unfortunately you're trying to see here yeah Nas is going to come in here he will score the decap his mind was just a little bit too slow on oh, getting back to that note. He can keep it in contention if he so chooses. They still obviously have to go onto the node versus the Necromancer, but oh no, actually gets feared off the node. That may actually guarantee the cap now. Heading on to Nasus. Nope, blue, other blue team forces were able to get onto the node just in time in order to stop the cap, but had it just been those two. It would have been an excellent play by Nas, as he would have guaranteed the cap there with that one little clutch fear. Excellently played indeed there by Nas. But, moving on from that again, this is the main bulk of fighting here. for Lone Agus, the Bunker Guardians here from both teams, so both teams know they want to commit to that. Again, the Bunker Guardian, the key is that you want to fight there. You need to have that support in play, you need to have the ability to res play, you need to have that tank ability in play. So having him over there is pretty much the sure sign that, guys, they're going to push this No, We need everybody over here now. And as well, we're seeing over there that Mime actually got taken down, unfortunately. Tried to go for some pretty serious damage on the Nas and Zombify there, and guys, got uh, gimped in the process, so he's going to be stuck up there. Unfortunately for the red team, he's kind of out of a sphere of, um, 
Kind of out of a sphere of influence for them, so he should be able to res himself up. And yep, he's gonna get himself back up into play there pretty easily. And now Tables may be turning in favor of the blue team as Nas ends up going into the down state here as well. Another thing to keep in mind, too, guys, by the way, is that red team once again is across the 350 point mark. So if they do take a fight, if they can, you know, kind of get a point where they can sneak around things, they can completely bail off everything and go for a Lord push if they so choose. They might be doing that now, but I think they're more, yeah, they're right now would be a really awkward time to do that. You can see them obviously moving away from things. I think more is just to try and, hey guys, let's cut our losses, get off this point, and oh, this is actually going to be really bad for the red team. Look at this. Quill just stopped there for a second to try and get a res off on his teammate, and in the process actually lost the capture on the graveyard there. So really awesome play there. Again, that's what I've been talking about before. That's the risk of going for third caps. It Again, if you lose those caps, not only are you going to make yourself seriously weak on the back node, but if you lose the fight at the far node, you are going to lose most of your players, and you won't be able to keep yourself alive on the mid node. So it's just this huge snowball that your opponents get, and it can flip really quickly back onto a three cap against you while you yourself were trying to seek that third capture point. Now, back over here, Mime trying to get resed off by Forlorn Aegis. Not going to happen. Very nice. He's down there with a Corrupt Boon coming off from Zombify and Nos. I, one of those. I'm not sure which one popped it, but excellent job there indeed. Getting that off onto him and again, fearing him away as he did have the stability up on uh, one he was trying to get the res. So instantly fearing him away and off the target there. And he's, again, those counties are going to be a bit too much for Forlorn to handle. So he too will get knocked down over here at the graveyard. Get knocked out. And Red Team will be on a warpath to recapture this point. Chiplicity's in the area, but I don't think he's going to try to stop the cap from happening. Yep, there you go. Chiplicity's instead going to go for a bit of a sneakier move. Join the fight that is happening already over here at the quarry in hopes of holding onto that note and stopping their opponents from getting that three cap. Wakey, unfortunately, has already taken a significant number of damage, a significant amount of damage over here. So Blue Team already looking good to just keep this node in their own favor. Duplicity immediately seeking his next target, which is going to be Nos, but Zombify has joined it as well after the recapture of middle. Just a couple seconds ago, to lag to coming in from the other side as well on the Blue Team. They're going to try to get in here and get themselves in a good spot. Try to hold on to the one node they've been able to keep for these last few minutes. They have lost the cap, granted, but in terms of the fight, they're in a pretty good spot. Duplicity is down again, don't get me wrong, but if they can knock out Wakey, which is looking very likely, they will get Chimplicity right back. And actually, no! Chimplicity did not get the tag on Wakey for whatever reason, and he's gonna stay in the down state. Nicely done there, indeed. Once again, from our, uh, actually, well, not really nicely done. Unfortunately played by Chimplicity there as he did not get the res. Thankfully, though, again, Red Team didn't really catch on to that, and they were far too busy with defending themselves. So, Chimplicity did actually end up getting a res there. Current score is once again 430 to 370. Blue team is over the red team is over the Lord push threshold now. So they will be pushing over here now, going into the red team base. Trying to uh Eliminate this and let us see if they are doing this and Lord uh, wait We have to note this too. Look at this. Yeah, Hippa's rushing Lord But a blue team over here are blue in red team's base. Look they have a much stronger rush It's gonna be a bit of a close one as again They are defending it pretty heavily at the moment here I want to check out on Hippa once again as he is trying to take out the Lord It's getting very low. Oh, it's gonna be close guys, but no apologies for missing it But we did have to go back and forth there blue team was able to get the Lord snipe off before them again Mainly due to the heavier push they had they got into the red team base rushed it very quickly knocked it out and with that, guys, our red team is, our apologies, our blue team is going to be taking the second game. They're going to tie the setup at 1-1, and we will now be pushed into a third game, I believe, which will be on the Forest of Niflhelm. So make sure you guys are sticking around. We'll be back with that third game in just a second.
soon. Last chance to nail down your strategy. And once again, guys, we are coming back to you with Outplayed by Belief versus Mime is actually Mime. The third game in this set, the final game in this set, actually. So we're going to see who will be taking it. To who's going to be going home without anything in their pockets. Where the winner will move on to the grand final as well as get that guaranteed 800 gems per player. Spot the game has return. already begun. So let's open up our map and see where splits are going. Red team going to head directly into the front. They will get that bit of initial burst off onto Four Lanagus, whereas the blue team, that is not going to be the case. They're going to head up around the back. They will gain the obvious height advantage of being up on top, and their opponents not really being able to do anything about that. But once again, they will join the fight a little bit later, and as well have that disadvantage of their Guardian, having taken a majority of the damage by the time they got into the fight. Other than that, though, it looks like, you know, in general, everybody's holding on tight. We can't really account for cooldowns or anything like that, because we can't, you know, get too good of a reading on cooldowns without actually going to the individual players themselves. But... Did I just... hold on one second. Did I just... Okay, never mind. I thought I just used a keybind to go to a player, and I was like, when did they add Shoutcaster keybinds? Anyway, going back into the game, Nos ended up going into the downstate, but again, Rez will come off from them. We're actually going to see nodes instantly traded out by either team. We've got, I believe it's Hiba capping blue team's home node, and as well, uh, we're going to see Triplicity capping the red team home node. Wakey goes down really far off the node, and Forlorn Inkus wants to pressure. He's going to come in for the Rez line. Obviously, we are going to see the, uh, we are going to see Vapor from Pop, but Zombify as well ended up going down. Not sure why they didn't go for the stop onto that. Nos too getting decimated here. Excellent play by the blue team. Really gonna kind of wipe up over here mid, and they may take the very early cap indeed. Nas still on the downside, Zombify on the downside. Nobody's there to rise except for Quilja, who's busy keeping himself alive on the mid note and just trying to keep that consistent for as long as possible. That's not gonna be very long indeed here. And with him getting knocked out of place, Blue Team will take a very, very early cap over here at the uh, over here at the castle. So once again. Blue team is going to obviously have to rotate back over to the mine to reinforce themselves, or our next big fight will probably be happening there. They actually only got the Ellie out of the base at the moment, so Wakey specifically. Uh, so he's going to have to kind of rocket past these guys and prevent getting bursted, but he's still going to get stunned at her. Obviously, again, Lightning Aura will stun anyone that's on him, but it has expired now. He's getting himself back up towards mid, but really kind of just running further and further into the belly of the beast, getting surrounded by players at the moment. Duplicity and Mime are all over him at the moment. Like, once again, he be, should be able to keep himself alive through most of that burst, but still playing a very risky game indeed, despite all of that. Was able to regroup over here with Hippify, so again, kind of evening out the odds. Portal will come up with their fry mine as well, and they will port themselves right back at the mid. Mime's like, nope, not gonna fight that, and he will get himself back up to mid ready for the next engagement. He's actually gonna pop back through, probably gonna go for a bit of a on to Hippify as both these teams kind of spread themselves out and choose where they actually want to pressure. Now, once again, we have Wakey going across over here. He's gonna go over here onto the Henge node, and you actually instantly saw Chimplicity leaving that node as the Ellie was on his way. He was in the process of slowly capping it, but actually, uh, I don't, uh oh not sure why he went into that. One second. Red team wins a capture point. Did you see that? And we're actually going to second time this happened today. Um, we're gonna reset the game, guys. Uh, our blue team did have a disconnect. And as well, they had the late at the time, so deeming that as a legitimate disconnect. Uh, we will be resetting the game. And yeah, we have to reset the match, obviously. So, uh, once again, short break, gonna turn up the music real quick, and we'll be coming back in about two minutes as soon as they get their Guardian back in play with the continuation of the set. As once again, we do have to reset the match due to the disconnect that did happen. Once again, apologies for that, and we'll be returning in just a moment.
We're almost ready, guys. Um, we'll be coming back in hopefully just a few minutes. Just waiting. Uh, they are going to get replaced. The, what, what ended up happening, by the way, for anybody that needed to know, is the uh, is the blue team ended up losing their guardian to an internet issues. I believe he's not coming back. Um, we are allowing him to replace him. I gave him a few minutes to try and get it back. He's not coming back. Um, I'm being a little bit too lenient with the times, I think. But they are going to replace him uh, now, so they've got another player coming in. We'll be resuming in just a few minutes, guys. Once again, apologies for the large delay. We should be resuming in uh, just a moment. We're almost ready.
Alrighty guys, we're finally coming back. Apologies once again for the very large delay there. We are back now though, and with the replacement on the side of mine that's actually mine, they are going to be having Ozzy joining them from Team Elusive if I remember correctly, so they're all coming into play here right now. Let us get started with the second game. Ah! Hold on! Okay, we had that- we had that bug where there was rubber banding at the start. Yeah, we had that bug where people rubber band at the start and poured all around the base, so... I obviously can't start the game. They weren't able to like swap out weapons and get their pre-buffs and all that going, so I have to restart again. Ah, uh, so while we don't have to wait for anyone to rejoin, we do have to rotate the map around, guys. Once again, apologies for the very large delay here in getting this semi-final done. And uh, we shall be resuming in just a moment. Once again, huge apologies. Your game should be restarting in hopefully about two minutes here. The match starts soon. Last chance to nail down your strategy. Wanna know you? Tell me the secrets in your heart. I wanna know you. Yeah, I hold on to your points. You. Seize theirs. Smiling at strangers. has appeared. We're back now, guys. We're on the right map. We are uh, logged in. We're waiting for the team joins, and then we should be getting started in just a second here. Once again, huge apologies for the delays here. We are running into disconnects, bugs, rubber banding, all over the place, and it is putting the cup very much so behind schedule. So again, that is my fault. Well, the rubber... Well, I mean, it's not really my fault, but um, <laughs> the game is being a little bit uncooperative with us tonight, so... We are just waiting at the moment for the rejoins on the blue team, and as soon as they are back in, and as soon as they are ready to go, we will get started with the real third match. So give me one sec. What the hell? Uh, hold on one second. Broken and worn, but they once 
<laughs> Sorry about that. The match starts soon. Last chance to nail down your strategy. All right, guys, we are finally getting started. I have instructed the teams that there will not be any resets regardless of what happens. If there is a disaster and, you know, like an asteroid hits the Earth, we're not restarting. We're keeping this game going regardless of what happens. It's, you know, we've been delaying this for too long, so... No more resets! We are getting started, and the cheese is real indeed. Hippify, well, not cheese, but, you know, Hippo, <laughs> three members of the red team are going to cross over here into blue team territory, making their way over here onto the edge. We got Chimplicity immediately diving in, trying to go for some damage, leaping off the point there. Quilter will get on note in order to keep the team fight going. Other than that, we do have blue team kind of starting to come back here. Pretty much everyone from the blue team is actually falling back here, so big old team fight going to get itself rolling, but red team is kind of established, so you can see they've taken a little bit of the cap here already. Actually, about a quarter of it, but once again, that's nothing to really consider as once it's going to flip right back and forth here for the majority of this game here. So once again, continuing on with things here at the moment. Zombify taking a lot of damage here. He's going to get hit pretty hard. Just waiting to see now if he's going to go down. Looks like he's going to hang on quite all right as this team fight continues onward. But for the time being, Red Team, as they did choose the aggressive path to things, are going to be the only team with a capture at the moment. We obviously are going to have that um that contest going on in the middle between each other. And then back over here at the Blue Team home node, it's really going to come down this, this, this node fight really determine how a lot of the game is going to end up going because again if we do see the red team losing this they are going to be put pretty seriously on the defensive and somebody can in theory sneak over there and take away the red team holding the time and could possibly allow the blue team to sweep a pretty quick three cap here but for the time being it looks like red team actually has a pretty secure hold on things the other thing to consider here as well is the fact that the blue team is not actually running with their original roster now they do have the uh they do have the kind of replacement uh guardian sitting in here here with them at the moment so he's not really attuned to them or anything like that and they have you know they kind of get used to each other still so red team will have a pretty significant advantage in that regard as well but red team did actually manage to take full control of the blue team home notes so they are going to be at that disadvantage with these stack with these unstaggered swans coming out those delights as well as the thief they might be able to really Really quickly come in here and knock out Hippify. So we're going to have to wait and see if that'll be the case. Once again as well, we also saw, I believe it was a warrior. Yep, Tiffany Starcaller from the blue team managed to sneak over here to the mine and is going to be able to steal away a decap and possibly a full cap too, depending on how quick Red Team can get on the node. It's going to be very close indeed. We got Red Team coming up to the threshold here right now. One more tick away and yep, they're going to full cap that. Nice LOW coming in there from Ozzy as well. We're just denying any chance of getting on the node. So blue team will be able to get that one cap and now finally going to get themselves on the board here and get some points under their name. The rest of the chaos is happening back over here at the Henge once again as blue team coming out of their spawn seeks to reinforce their own nodes back over here once again and trying to take things back under their control trying to get that trying to get that two cap back in their favor on the side nodes and hopefully come back and win this game zombified going down over there's blue team once again coming closer and closer to winning this fight but again superior numbers easily in the favor of the right team with the 3v2 happening mime is going to jump himself up on top of the hench here at the moment hip going to try to go for a pull i believe the pull connected but there's this really weird thing you can do where if you as the pool is taking you in you can actually go in for a lot less distance and i think that's what happened there with mime and he was able to get himself out of there unfortunately his teammate that was supporting him over here did end up in the downstate. That was Delicta. Hey, there's no one else with here supporting him at the moment, so he's going to have to try and find a way out of here. But unfortunately, he may not even be able to do that. Good job dodging out of the way of the CCs that Hippify was going to put on. But granted, he's surrounded by three of his If he does manage to escape out of here, it'll be impressive to say the least. But unfortunately, yep, slow is going to him. Hippo gets the pull off. Fear coming off there from Zombify. And as well, they're going to kind of lock him in here. And he might actually loop back around the henge, but that's very unlikely. As, again, his low health pool is pretty much going to force him to fall back to the beach and then come back later when if he is at a much more generous health pool. Mid is actually been decapped away from the red team as well as we head back over to that fight to check things out red team slowly recapping that but wakey recently went into the down state good knockback coming out there from cold to those he does try to go for the rest should be able to get it but it really depends on how heavy the pressure is coming in it's pretty heavy they got him back up cold just just surviving through you can see he's at about about 15 to 20 maybe around 30 ish percent health when he ended up getting that heal up there but thankfully he did get his teammate up in time to the point where he was not forced to get off the course and res which pretty much would have guaranteed that uh blue team would have been able to get that down a good reinforce is coming in here just the nick of time too from the red team we got hippa coming in to support this 
this. Duplicity was taking a little bit too much damage. Tiffany Starcaller in here as well. Believe retreating from uh, the mine, actually. Not in the best spot here at the moment as well, as she is going to be forced to kind of put herself... I apologize, she's going to be forced to kind of put herself on this node and probably end up going into the downstate. There we go. Ozzy coming in trying to support Red Team. Really going all in on trying to get the kill. Even all, even kind of lost all the progress they had on the cap there a couple seconds ago in order to guarantee that they are were able to take Tiffany into the downstate there. Now Ozzy being the last one alive. They're instead going to put pressure on Ozzy instead of directly going for the stomp. Hip is still coming over there trying to stop the uh, trying to stop the bandage um, attacks here. Or not attacks. Trying to stop the bandage heals that Tiffany is trying to do. But she's pretty much given up all hope. She's going to let herself go down. And that'll allow the 2v1 over here at the Henge to take its full, or about not the Henge, at the, uh, at the Keep to take its full effectiveness as uh, they try to take out Ozzy. Once again, as he's a bunker right, he can survive for a pretty decent amount of time, but it's going to end eventually. And actually, he's trying to get away from this fight now. And again, just going to bail off it, let Red Team take it. And again, that will allow our Red Team to rocket themselves ahead just a little bit more. Going back once again over here towards the general vicinity of the Blue Team boss. You can note the Red Team once again has invested their defenses pretty heavily in this area. And that might have been the reason why we actually saw Wakey try to push off this node as well. Just trying to make sure that they don't get that extra support coming in, and Ozzy too, kind of transferring himself over there, just to make sure his team can get the support that is needed for that team fight over here at the Hanges. Red team, once again, really just dominating the entire map here at the moment, a full free cap in their favor, as our blue team which is struggling to get A, even A, get out of their spawns here at the moment, and B, gather enough strength to push onto that node, take it back, and then conquest onto the other nodes as well. We're even going to see, I believe it's one of the Necromancers taking full advantage of this opportunity, Nas specifically, has gone over here to the spawn here, and should be able to take pretty, should be able to make pretty quick work with spawn here, as again, you take a look at the big map, Blue team, the farthest to the right they have someone on the blue team is over here. So easily two thirds of the map was available there for Nas as a cushion and had no issues whatsoever soloing down that boss and getting the points for it as well as the buff for his teammates. Buffs really, you know, buffs really nothing to brag about. It's like 50 points in all your stats, which is kind of nothing. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit of a boost that obviously you'll get, but nothing too great there, but obviously it does help out that little bit. Meanwhile, back at mid, we do have a little bit of pressure coming back on Tiffany Starcolor, but again, she is also going to be outnumbered over here as it is Nas as well as Wiki going up against her. They should be able to make very quick work again with Wiki pulling in the AoE as well as support to keep Nas up to full health and Nas bringing in the Connies to kind of deal the killing blows to him. We'll check him out. And even so, Nas is just going to wait on the node itself and kind of just let him bleed out there. So again, this game is rolling pretty heavily in the favor of the red team. And actually, we're going to see a GG called out there by Tiffany Starcaller, which means we are going to end it early. And as such now... We will be having Outplayed by Belief take the 2-1 victory. They will be moving on to the Grand Finals. And with that said, guys, we are going to take a very short break. I'm going to try to make it as short as possible. I do need to take a quick break myself, but we're going to make sure it will be 8-minute break. Shuffle of two minutes from what we normally take. we will be coming back to you with the Grand Finals in just a few moments. Guys, stick around. I'll be back in just a few minutes.